What's going on hobby people? My name is Jacob from the Dry Paint Pot and today I'm going to teach you how I paint skinks and you can use this method to paint any type of skin that you'd like. So stick around. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that over the past few months, I've been posting some pictures of skinks that I've been painting. And I've had a lot of you ask me how I paint those models. And I've also had a lot of you ask me how I paint my space marines. Now, in all honesty, the method is exactly the same. I paint my skinks in the same way that I paint my space marines. I just use different colors. And I also change where I highlight depending on the build of the model. The only time I switch up this method is if the skin has some kind of extra feature to it, whether it be a scale or a scar or something along those lines. But this method that I'm gonna teach you today is quite universal and it'll work on almost any model. This is not a sponsored video, but I did win a giveaway from Hobby Hotspots recently and they sent me some brushes. Now, I was going to do a review video on them, but I figured why not just also roll that into this one and knock that out too. So while this is a tutorial on how to paint skin, I'm also going to be reviewing these brushes today. And if you like these combined tutorial and review videos, let me know in the comment section below. Now let's quit talking and get things started. All right, so we have our skink here, all primed and ready. I use a Rust-Oleum two-in-one paint and primer, and you can use whatever primer you like. But I definitely suggest using gray because we're going to be going over some of these areas in white, and it's very hard to go from a black primer to white without doing a ton of layers. And by using a ton of layers, you lose out on detail, and that's something you definitely don't want to sacrifice. Now to put down this first layer, I'm going to be using the Hobby Hotspots Premium Synthetic Utility Brush. This is a medium sized brush. And again, I haven't used this yet, so we're going to see how it works out today. Just from first impressions, the bristles are very nice. There's no, there's no frays, no stray little bristles anywhere. I mean, I wouldn't expect so because it's new, but you never know. Just from first impressions, it feels like a quality brush. I have some of these Walmart brushes over here and you can just tell they are so much cheaper and they've kind of just fallen apart over the years. They, the wood bloats and it starts to crack, but this feels nice. I'm excited to use it. So we first want to start things out with a base coat of Thousand Suns Blue. Now, if you're not painting skinks, you can use whatever other color you'd like. But again, this works for almost any type of skin. So just replace the Thousand Suns Blue with whatever other color you'd like, but you want to start with your darker color. We're going to work our way up from Thousand Suns Blue up to Temple Guard Blue, and then even almost up to Corax White. We're gonna mix in some Temple Guard Blue with the Corax White a little later to get some of our brightest highlights. Now for this base coat, we wanna load up our brush with some of this paint, but you don't wanna have too much in there. Too much will put way too much paint down on the model. It'll goop up all the details. And then when you do more layers later on, you'll notice that you're gonna lose a lot of those fine details and the deep recesses will start to fill in. So take some of the paint off of your brush. I just twirl some off right on my thumb and just start throwing down a nice even base coat onto your model. While working with this medium brush, it's pretty dang good. I mean, it holds a decent amount of paint, which is nice, so it goes a long way, but also it's got a really fine tip to it, which just on the first few passes is not breaking down. I mean, we're not losing that nice tip. On some of the cheaper brushes, even with your first few passes, you'll know that you'll start to use, lose that tip right away. So, so far, so good. While I wait for this to dry, I do wanna remind you that there are a few places that we do not wanna paint with blue. The places on the skink are the crest, right here, which we'll be painting red later on, the weapon, the mouth, including the teeth and the tongue, the eyes, and any of the jewelry around the model as well. Also, we do not wanna paint the scales blue. You can if you want the scales to be blue, but I like my skink scales to be white. So by painting it blue, like I said earlier, we're gonna need more layers to cover up that blue with the white, and that's gonna make us lose detail. So avoid those few places when you're painting the skink, and it's gonna make life a lot easier. Now I'd like to remind you the good words of Duncan. Two thin coats is always better than one thick coat, 
and I really do mean that. So when you're painting this today, be sure to use two thin coats, or even three thin coats, depending on how thin your paint is. Checking back in on the brush, so far, so good. The tip is really holding up, and with it being so fine, I don't have to switch between a bigger brush to cover more area and a smaller brush to get into the tiny little cracks and all the small details. I was able to do all around the eyeball with just this small tip and not have to worry about switching brushes. So, so far, I'm really liking this. The only trouble I had is there is one hair on here that tends to want to split away from time to time. But a solution for that, if you run into that kind of trouble, is wet your brush and then put it right here into the crease of your hand, close your hand a little bit, and spin. You'll get a nice fine tip again, and it'll hopefully take care of that little stray. I feel like later on in the future I'll have to snip that, but until then I'm not going to worry about it. Now using a new brush for the sake of preserving the new one, we just want to throw a little bit of wash on our brush, find an area, and just throw a light wash on there. If we notice any major pooling, we want to just dry our brush or grab a new one and dab at that right away. But we just want to wash over all the areas that we painted blue. Now the reason why we're washing is because wash is dark. So whatever recess it gets into, it's going to darken it tremendously. And this saves us time and layers because we could simulate the same thing by starting with a much darker color, like a very, very dark blue, but it would take us so many layers to get up to the highlight color that it would just take forever and there would be a ton of paint on your model. Now, not all painters wash and they have their reasons for it, but for me, most of the time, I don't have a problem with washing the model. It also gives us an idea of some of the deepest recesses of the model and that'll help us determine where to put the highlights a little later. Now, one question that I'm often asked is how do you know where to put the highlights? And it's a really good question because it's one that I had when I first got into the hobby. Now, the easiest way to figure out where to put the highlights is to pull a Lion King. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. Wherever the light touches on the model is where you want to lighten up. And the best way to figure that out is by putting it under either a lamp or a light bulb and seeing wherever the light hits. For instance, under my ring light, I'll see that a lot of the light hits this part of the arm, the raised muscle right here, and this part of the shoulder. But you'll notice that the darker parts are right underneath this muscle crease right here, and the bottom end of the arm. Also, the inside of the arm is quite dark, but we do have a little bit of light touching this part of the muscle and the forearm. So wherever the light touches is where we want to paint next and we want to leave any of the places that are in shadow dark. So now that the model's washed, we want to come back with some Thousand Suns Blue and go over any large areas that have light touching it. So for instance, I want to use that Thousand Suns Blue to go from this part of the tail all the way back. I want to go over the raised muscle right here, the entire area, the part of the calf right here, a large section of it, and anything, like I said, that has light catching it. Now, I do not want to go over this area right here, where it's darker, where there is natural shadow, and also the bottom end of the tail, because as you see, there's no light there, so it shouldn't be lighter. Now, there's one thing that I do not want you to forget. Use thin layers when you're doing this. Do not paint directly out of the pot, and do not use paint that has a thicker consistency than skim milk. It is very important that we go as thin as possible and use these thin layers because it's gonna help with our transition and it's also going to help us avoid adding unnecessary texture to the model. So if you see, this is how thin my paint is. And that's what you're looking for. Anything thicker than that is too thick. Okay, so now that we have that first layer done and first layer as in the first layer after we washed, we now want to start adding some lighter colors to the Thousand Suns Blue. Now the color that I like to use is Temple Guard Blue. So what I do, always make sure to shake your paints, is I get some of this Temple Guard Blue. And then 
I throw it right down here on my wet palette. I do the same with a Thousand Suns Blue. And I just start to mix the two colors together. Now a little goes a long way, so just mix it together a little bit. So now that we have that new mix of colors in the center right here, that's what I'm going to use to start going over all of these raised surfaces again. Now to really lighten this model up, I am going to go very wide with this new layer. But if you want it to stay darker, you can always move your way in. And when I say move your way in, I mean, instead of going over the entire thigh, you can just focus on the area here to here. But I really want to lighten the skink up, so I'm going to go fairly wide with this. Pretty much over all the surfaces that I just went over. Now, a lot of you might ask why I even bothered going over all the surfaces with the Thousand Suns Blue instead of going straight to the mix with the Temple Guard. Now, the reason is we want to use the thin mix layers to get a smooth transition. If I would have went straight to Temple Guard, first off, with it being so light, I would have had to do more coats to have it be as strong as I wanted, and the transition wouldn't have been as smooth. So it's very important to take your time, use thin layers, and go over these surfaces with just lighter shades of blue. Now, the next few steps are completely in your hands. I can't tell you how many layers to do, but I can say that the more layers you do, the better blend you'll have. So what I mean by this is we started with Thousand Suns Blue and we added just a tiny bit of Temple Guard Blue and worked our way up. Now you can continue to add just little bits of Temple Guard Blue to the Thousand Suns Blue and what that's going to do is it'll take a while but it's going to look really good. You're going to have a very smooth transition. Or you can use larger amounts of Temple Guard Blue. You'll get through this faster but you're not going to get as good of a blend. So it's completely up to you on how long you're willing to take on this model. Now, I'm willing to spend a little extra time on this model. So what I did was add just a tiny bit of Temple Guard Blue to the Thousand Suns Blue. And what I'm going to do is not cover the same area that I did before. So I'm not going to go from this point here to this point here. I'm instead going to go closer and closer to the center of the muscle. Now, the reason why I'm going closer to the center of the muscle is because that's where the highlight is. And I know that's where the highlight is because when I put it under a lamp, that's where most of the light catches. So if you're unsure, put your model right back under the light and see where all the light catches on the model. And those are the places where you're going to want to highlight. So for instance, on the shoulder blade, a lot of the light catches at the top, but not as much at the bottom. So this next layer, if I just throw a little more paint on my brush, it's going to be focused mainly right here at the top. And you see, I went just this far down. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom, but as I add more and more Temple Guard Blue, I'm going to make my way up to the top. I'm going to finish with just a tiny little circle, a little highlight of Temple Guard Blue mixed in with a little bit of Corax White. And that's going to be right there. Let me see if I can get this a little closer to the camera so you can see where the light naturally it's just bouncing right off of this spot right here. So again, just add little bits of Temple Guard Blue to the Thousand Suns Blue, or just a lighter color to your darker color if you're not using blue for the skin, and continue to do this process, working your way to where the light is bouncing off of your model the most. So just a bit of advice, it's not necessary to go super bright with these models. For instance, it's not necessary to go all the way up to Temple Guard Blue or even Corax White or White Scar. But since skinks are like lizard people, I figure they'd be very vibrant and colorful. So I want to go very, very light like that. But if you're working with just like a normal skin tone, you might want to stop at this step right here. And again, this is something that's completely up to you. All right, just took a small break real quick. Now remember, if you're going to take a break for an extended period of time, be sure to wash your brushes. Don't just rinse them off with water because little bits of paint will stay in there and it will ruin your brush over time. So make sure you get yourself either some brush cleaner or just use some soap and get those cleaned up. If you wanna see how I clean my brushes, just ask down low in the comment section and I'll be sure to make a video on it at another time.
Now I've got my skink almost where I want it to be, but I'm going to add some major highlights now with some of this Temple Guard Blue. So same kind of deal, gonna get that down the palette, gonna add some water until it's down to the consistency of skim milk. That looks skim milkish. I don't know, I don't drink milk, I drink almond milk, but that looks good. Now, if you're doing, let's say like human skin, consider this to be your second to last brightest layer. So use it like that accordingly. So when I'm using this, I'm just running it along the edge of this eyebrow right here but I'm not going completely sideways and rubbing the edge of my brush on that. That's what I'm gonna do when I do my extreme highlight. And we're gonna do that specifically with the skink with some white scar mixed in with the Temple Guard Blue. All right, now this is what your skink or whatever model you're painting right now should look like, somewhere like this. Regardless of what color you're using, the transition should be very similar. And now what we want to do is get a little bit of white scar or any white paint that you have. I sometimes use Corax white. It depends on how bright I want it to be, but we're just going to take some of that and mix in just a pinch with the lightest color that you're using. So for me, that's Temple Guard Blue. And again, going nice and thin with it, we're just going to add some extreme highlights to trace the muscles. For some of these extreme highlights, you can go ahead and turn your brush to the side a little bit, just so you can catch the edge of whatever you're trying to highlight. For instance, I'm going to try to highlight this eyebrow right here, so I turn my brush to the side a pinch, and I just run it along the edge, like so. And there you have it, that's skink skin. This is how I do all of my skinks. I tried switching it up a little bit, using an airbrush and doing some quick highlights, but the quality was nowhere near the same. I mean, of course I used a brighter color, but you can just see the difference between, you know, quick batch painting and really taking your time and doing all these highlights and layers. Now, if you'd like to see this skink finished, I will be making a video next week about all the other things that you have to paint on the skink for him to be done. And I'll also be reviewing Hobby Hotspot's dry brush when I work on the base. So if you'd like to see that, just hang out until next week and I'll have that up for you soon. So let's go ahead and talk about the Hobby Hotspots utility brush. This brush, honestly, and like I said, this isn't a sponsored video or anything, but this is probably my new favorite brush. It's really good. The, the point stayed the entire time. I mean, I didn't have to switch brushes at all. I painted this entire thing with one brush. So the tip stayed. That little bristle that was fraying isn't really a problem anymore. It sort of just went away. So whatever that means, I'm fine with it. And it held a lot of paint. Even though I was only keeping paint near the tip, it went a long way. I didn't, I didn't find myself having to go back to the palette nonstop and keep filling up my brush. It held paint well, the tip stayed, and I think this is a good quality brush. Again, I don't have a ton of fancy brushes, so I haven't had experience with, you know, the most expensive top of the line brushes out there. But for what I've messed with and what I have, this is probably the best. So if you want to give it a shot, I know Hobby Hotspots is exclusive through Amazon, so check them out or check out their Instagram. Because yeah, I, I give it a five out of five. I don't see anything wrong with this brush at all. And I can't wait to try out the other two brushes that they sent me. Uh, well, they actually sent me three other brushes, but two of them were dry brushes and one was a fine detail. So, you know, I assume that the dry brushes are exactly the same. I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons, Leandrist and Che Phillip. Thank you both so much for your support and it's your help that keep these videos coming each week. Now, if you'd also like to be a supporter of the channel, get a dry paint pot sticker, get access to these videos early each week and all the other goodies that come along with being a patron, I'll drop a link to my Patreon below. And if you'd like to just hang out and talk about the hobby, I'll also drop a link to my Discord down low too. Now let's check out this week's viewer submissions. Starting off with a post from ccrazy420, we have a very awesome display for your minis. Now, I've never seen this display before, but I would love to get my hands on one. 
first off, I love all the minis in the case. I've been seeing them pop up on Instagram occasionally, and I love how they're turning out. They all look great. I'm really interested in how you can remove the shelves because that opens up a lot of opportunities to put some bigger models in there and also to set up a diorama. I'm thinking this display would be really good for a Space Marine diorama, starting with the older Marines at the top and working your way down to the Primaris at the bottom. Now, if I get my hands on one of these, I have to do it. And if one of you want to steal my idea and do it before me, please do, because I've got way too many projects on my hands as it is. So the chances of me actually getting to that are quite slim. If you do it, I'll be sure to feature you in a video. I'll post it on Instagram. I'll, I'll put it everywhere because that would be so freaking cool. And here we have a model from Che Gavesa, and I believe he calls it a Slith. I don't really know what it is. I don't know what it's from, but it's really cool looking. Now it looks like the blue and yellow that was used are possibly contrast paints. I can't tell, but if they are, I really like how they turned out. A buddy of mine uses contrast paints on some of his War Machine models, and I've always liked how they've turned out on organic material. Now I don't personally like when people use contrast paints on things that are metal, but I really like how they turn out on like skin or scale. So the blue and the tan on this model look really good. I love how it turned out. And you'll have to let me know how you did those blue scales because I can't tell if that's just the paint or if you did a wash over it, possibly in like a Drakenoff nightshade. But very bright, very fun. And it kind of reminds me of the skink we painted today. So awesome job and I love it. Now be sure to share any of your work with me both on Instagram and Facebook at The Dry Paint Pot because I pick my favorites each week and I feature them in my upcoming videos. Now wash your brushes, clean your paint pots, and keep on painting.